wow, I'm here two months later interviewing the champ, DJ Prentice. And first of all, DJ, I must say that I'm so proud of you. Uh, you are an outstanding fighter. I've been in this league for 40 plus years and I have all the respect in the world for you, so I, I must say that publicly to you, sir. Thank you. Champ, tell everybody that night how your life changed. You know, that, that night was very overwhelming. And, uh, you know, first off, to drop down on my knees and give glory to God was, was the number one thing because I had been waiting for a long time to have uh, not just the belt, but uh, at least the uh, financial aspect of the sport with it as well. And, you know, winning this title plus the contract has really, really helped my financial status uh, at home, you know, with, with my daughter, with, uh, you know, just me in general, everywhere I'm at, you know, able to get things out of the way and focus mainly just on the training itself. You are defending your title for the first time. How does it feel for someone to try to take your money from you? Yeah, like I said, I've been at this for a long time. So for him to come and try to take this from me, you know, he's going he's gonna to have to knock me out. He's going to have to do something incredible to, to put me on the ground and to make me tap uh, or just come out with a big bang because it's been years since I've been uh, fighting, and it's not the only belt that I've had. So uh, this one I'm wanting, I'm definitely going to keep uh, to continue having the contract. When you wake up in the morning, I want you to walk through your life with me and tell me what you, how you start your day and how you end it. You know, <clears throat> as soon as I wake up, the first thing I do is I take my uh, protein and my BCAs. Uh, I'll have that drink first. I'll have like another two um, 20 ounce uh, glasses of water uh, and uh, I'll have my oatmeal and depending whatever else I want to eat, egg whites, stuff like that. But uh, I get my meal in first and then I'll wait about an hour and a half and then I'll go ahead and head to the gym. Uh, usually I train at Gold's Gym and just get my cardio in, my weightlifting in. Uh, depending on the day, sometimes I'll get some pad work in. But um, usually get about two to three hours in the morning. And then again, have my shake, have something to eat, and then wait for the evening workout, have another two, three hours of uh, training. And even after that, go for a run at the very end. So uh, I'm constantly at the gym. I'm always at the gym. In the morning, I'm at the gym, I have lunch. In the evening, I get back at the gym. I mean, that's my work. That's my office. So now that I have the financial status to just be there and uh, not have a part-time job, I'm able to just be in the office, you know, and uh, do the sport that I love. How much training will you put in for this fight, June 14th? Uh, you know, this, there's actually a lot more training going on this time than, than previous because uh, before I won this title and, my, uh, and that contract, you know, I had a part-time job. So in the morning I was working, you know, from eight to one. And so that would eat up a lot of my time of training. Now, like I said, I wake up, have my meal, get what I need to put in my body, and then I'm already in the gym. So, you know, this time around, I mean, like I said, usually I'm getting, you know, four hours of training. Now I'm getting probably six to seven hours, sometimes eight. Uh, sometimes I'll stay in the steam room, I'll stay in the sauna just to uh, sh shred a little bit extra pounds um, and then uh, you know go for my run. So uh, there's a lot more training going on this time uh, during this training camp. So tell the fighters that JC Fight Promotions is thinking of putting the 125 out belt. Uh, we're thinking about putting the, the, uh, the heavyweight belt. Um, tell the fighters what it, what that has helped you do. The mm -hmm. ultimate goal was for you just to train, yeah. and it's doing exactly what we hoped it to. You know, having the 125 contract going out, the heavyweight contract going out, uh, I have a good friend of mine, Luis Vega, who's fighting for the 145 contract, and him too, he's been waiting for this for a long time. 
And a lot of us are training to get to that higher level, to get to the UFC, to get to, you know, where the NFL is at, where the NBA is at, where, you know, where people are like, you know, you're at the top of your level. And I tell you what, JC's at the top of your level if you want to go uh, financial wise. Uh, I'm a paid athlete and that's what we want to be. We want to be paid athletes. You know, right now, a lot of us are struggling just to go train, just to get one fight. And then during that fight, you're making not even a thousand dollars the day of that fight. Uh, so if there's a contract out there for fifty thousand uh, dollars, go for it. You know, 125 heavyweights, um, 145, 155. I mean, if they're out there, you need to go for them because that's what is really going to help you during your process of uh, making it to the bigger level. Question for you: Do you know your opponent you're fighting? Yes, I do. His name is Jose Seja. Uh, I've trained with him a little bit. Uh, the guy has a strong heart. He, he packs a good punch, and uh, you know, when it comes down to this $50,000 contract, I mean, who's not gonna put it all on the line? And you just never know what could happen that fight. So I'm not taking him lightly. I'm not taking him, you know, lesser than the other opponent I fought. I'm gonna do exactly the same thing I did with the last opponent I fought. I have two, to me, very important questions to ask you. As you know, this is H, uh, Hero Fighting Champion League. And first question is, who has been your hero? <laughs> um, you know, the hero of mine is still alive right now. And his name is Jesus Christ. You know, he died for me, he sacrificed his life for me. And he's my hero right now. Number two. That's a beautiful hero, by the way. Think about <laughs> what he did for us. That's a whole... Yeah. And the thing is, you know, he's, he's not dead. He's still alive. Okay. And number two, who have you been a hero to? You know, through the past years of training, I mean, not many people know, but I also have a martial arts background. And uh, I've been doing martial arts since I was seven. I opened up a gym when I was 16 years old. And... I had a lot of students that, you know, I was able to encourage and help and motivate and give them that extra boost, that extra confidence that, you know, they can strive for what they want. And there's still a lot of students that from then they still follow me now. And, you know, I see them now in, in high school. I see some of them, you know, doing their sport and doing the best they can. And if it's one thing that I instilled in them, it was this one logo that I had them imprint on their geese every time uh, we went to compete. And it was AG2G. And uh, you know, it touches my heart every time that I'll see an athlete that I used to train. And you know, on the end of their quote, or you know, one of my students you know, is just about to graduate, and on her Leatherman, you know, she put AG2G. And that means all glory to God. And that's one thing that I've instilled in them, and that's giving God all the glory. So uh, to me, that's, that's pretty much, you know, uh, the people that I uh, would say that I have inspired or helped. And uh, yet again, not even pushing them towards me, but pushing them towards God. I know you have a, a lot of people look at you as a mentor in the Valley. A lot of young fighters look up to you. I, I hear it all the time. So you're doing something right, young man. And, and we just thank you for coming today but the last question is anybody you want to thank any of your sponsors out there um you know there's been a lot of people that have helped me that have been along my side and they all know who they are they've all been there for me you know since the time I fought you know my very first fight um, it's friends it's family um, it's the people that I, I, my acquaintance that I, you know, surround myself with. And if they're seeing this, you know, they know who they are. There's just so many to name. I would, I would not be able to tell you all of them at once. Well, DJ, you're a true tramp. And we want to wish you all the luck of the world June 14th. We'll see you there. All right. Thank you.